You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. This episode is entitled Jumpy June. Now, I could have entitled it something like Jupiterian June because there's a lot of Jupiter stuff going on, but there's enough Mars mixed in, I had to throw it to the jumpy side of the scale. And oh well, maybe we'll talk about some Neptune and Pluto things that make it a little weird too. Anyway, when we had last month's episode called Better Days Ahead, remember better was in quotes. So uh, things are not quite as intense as they were for so long, so long but things are still mighty crazy. So eh, I guess it all depends on how you judge it. And that's one of the things we do with astrology is we make judgments or assessments, some say forecasts and predictions. And these can only be based on trends and cycles and things that we've seen happening before. And then we try to say, okay, if something like that happens again, and it's never, ever exactly the same again. So you know when you go to your financial advisor or if you go to buy some kind of financial instrument, you'll always see that little sort of disclaimer phrase. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Right. And it's the same thing in astrology. So we do our best. We take a stab. We look at what the different symbols are and we try to see how they're interacting. You know, it's kind of uh, like a deck of cards. I oftentimes explain when I'm teaching about astrology and I say, we've got our basic planets, signs, the interactions between their positions called the aspects. And it's as if you have your suits and the numbers in the suits and you shuffle them up and when you lay them out, you know, no two hands are ever the same. And there's hundreds of types of games you can play with a deck of cards. So you can see how even though there might always be the higher cards are always higher than the lower cards, you know, but sometimes ace is high, sometimes ace is low. Sometimes you have a wild card, sometimes you don't. So when we get to astrology, we're also juggling and seeing how things play together. So I want to start off talking about a very important interaction that has one of its three moments of precise precision, preciseness in June. And this is a relationship between two planets called a quincunx, or sometimes people call it an inconjunct. It's five twelfths of the sky, which is 150 degrees or five signs apart. And when things are five signs apart, they don't share the same element. They don't share what we call the same polarity, like a masculine or feminine sign. They don't share the same what we call mode or quality, which means um, sort of approach to action. You know, there's the planet, I mean, sorry, sorry, the signs at the start of a season called cardinal, which means confront or take action. There's the signs that the sun transits through in the middle of the season called fixed, which are like stand your ground. And then there's the signs that come up at the ends of the season, which are called mutable, which means kind of like sway and dodge, get out of the way. So there's no connection between signs that are five signs apart. So when planets are occupying a position like this, it's kind of like a mismatch. I call it a disconnect. There's no 
you know, Venn diagram where they're overlapping. So we have to build a bridge. We have to find a compromise. And the planets that are involved in this quincunx in June are Jupiter, like I mentioned, Jupiter is all over the place this month, with Neptune. Well, Jupiter is a planet of openness. It rules Sagittarius, you know, think of the archer aiming high in the sky with his arrow. And Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, which is the ocean. You can see the surface might be calm or bumpy, but there's so much depth to it. There's so much unseen and unknown in the ocean. It rules fog, things that envelop us and block our vision. It's more of a hiding kind of sign and even planet. So we have that mismatch between trying to be out in the open and trying to have things covered up. So one thing that we're discussing a lot in our politics right now is how do we get information out in the open? Is it volunteered? Is it leaked? Um, who's trying to cover something up and keep things either close to the vest or under wraps? And Jupiter happens to be going through the sign of Libra this year. It spends about a year in each sign. It has about a 12 degree, a 12 year cycle around the 360 degrees of the zodiac. So Libra is a sign of justice. Think of the scales of justice that represent the sign Libra. And it's about balance and fairness, equality, things like that. So when we have the Pisces energy, the Neptune energy on the high side, it might represent empathy and charitable uh, actions towards those people who are the underdogs. Um, on the downside, it might be deception and uh, what magicians call misdirection. I love that one because they're saying with their pattern, they're all about, and in this hand, I'm doing all this, but over in this hand, they're not showing you. They got something they're hiding in this hand so that they're going, ooh, produce it or make it disappear. You know, I used to date a magician. In fact, that's who got me into astrology in the first place. And uh, it was just fascinating to watch how he would prepare, prepare, prepare to do those tricks that made him look so easy. But it's all because of misdirection. So when we see people who might have Jupiter strong in their charts, they may not be clear or they may not be um, honest about what they're saying or they may misdirect or a big thing we call is projection. So we look for those kinds of things when we see this in action. So we had this particular connection occurred three times and this is because of that phenomenon you've heard me discuss called retrograde, Latin for backward step or motion. And it's an optical illusion but because Earth isn't the center of our solar system with everything going around us in nice neat circles, we're moving too and the relative motion when we pass a slower planet or a faster planet passes us, it makes it look like that planet goes backwards in the zodiac for a while in the opposite direction of its usual travel. So when a planet is changing direction, it looks like it slows down, slows down, stops, almost motionless for a while, then slowly gets going in the opposite direction. We call that stopping point a station. It's almost like thinking of a train pulling into a terminus, the last station that it operates at. And so we have um, People can get on and off, you know, all that kind of stuff, but it stopped for a while. So when a planet stops in its tracks, it also exudes greater power from that position because it's not whisking away and going somewhere. So what we have not only is this quincunx, five signs apart between Jupiter and Neptune, but we also have both of them making a stopping point in June. So on June 9th, Jupiter ends its retrograde. And that happens to be a full moon day. And it happens to be a fairly 
mild full moon as full moons go, but it's going to really have a strong dose of Jupiter happening with it. And then on the 16th, Neptune starts its retrograde. Now I look back over, say, the past decade just to see, oh, do we have the same month or even within a few weeks, or in this case, a little more than a week, where these two planets both are stationing at the same time? And we have had it maybe three or four times in the decade. So I can't say it's rare, but it's not routine and regular. And other times when it's happened, they haven't been in this mismatch kind of position to one another. So some of the things that we're sort of looking for with this connection would be what's out in the open, what's being covered. How much are people being sympathetic about issues of fairness? Another thing that Jupiter relates strongly to, and when you think of that sort of archer, and things going far from the Sagittarius sign ruled by Jupiter, both the sign and the planet are related to international, global, foreign relations, all kinds of things that are in a wider context. So we also see a lot of discussion. Well, we had this with the recent trip of our president to our NATO allies about fairness of who's paying what for our international uh, alliances, and then are we going to participate in the Paris P uh, Climate Accord? So as of the taping on this today, that decision hasn't been made. Okay, so if I want to speculate what's going on in June and June into July from this um, Jupiter and Neptune, I look back to see, well, what was going on the two times before this when this, we call aspect, occurred? The first time was in October. The 23rd was the ac exact date. And that was in the middle of, boy, we had a whole parade of October surprises. But the really biggest one, or one of the biggest ones, got rolling with that release of the Hollywood Access tape about uh, Trump's lewd comments, we'll just say. So that was followed by a barrage of accusations of sexual misconduct on his part, but we're going back years and years and involving, you know, beauty pageants and all kinds of things. So honestly, I looked this up. It went on for three weeks. And the thing that finally shut that up was when Comey came out and started talking about the emails. And that was because of Wiener's laptop and all that mess. We know what happened there. But even by the end of the month, back again, discussions about Russian involvement in the U.S. elections. So that was not a good month for the Donald, October. Then when we come to May, which was the second occurrence of this aspect, he fires Comey for looking into his, uh, well, he said it was because of how Comey mishandled the whole Clinton email thing, but then later we really found out it was more about the Russian investigation. Then Mueller was appointed to be the special counsel and kind of take up the investigation that Comey had, you know, been removed from. And that appointment of Mueller was on 517. That was the exact date of this Jupiter Neptune quincunx. So when we talk about out in the open versus covering up, that investigation is going to look deeply into it. And we're going to see this going on. Now the third and final of these quincunxes between Jupiter and Neptune is on the 4th of July and that's the USA birthday and anything that's going on at a birthday can reverberate out for months after, maybe a year after. So we're looking at a long-term investigation of this. Now whenever I see, well I want to backtrack for one second and just say I don't have birth times on a lot of people who are involved in all of this scandal. And I just look up from their date of birth and I laughed when I looked up Comey because he's born December 14th and Donald Trump's birthday is June 14th. Those are exactly six months apart, which means half a year, which means half a zodiac and half a zodiac, 180 degrees. That's what we call an opposition. And an opposition is a direct clash, confrontation. Sometimes it means your adversary, your open enemy. So he gets rid of that guy, but, you know, on the 
magic date of what's going to happen with Jupiter and Neptune, here comes Bob Mueller. So now when I see two planets in a quincunx like that, I always look to see if there's a third one that forms this special kind of triangle called a finger of God. And that is two quincunxes joined by a sextile. A sextile is two signs apart, 60 degrees, favorable. So we have, you know, five and five makes 10 plus two is the 12 signs in this triangle. So sure enough, Quick planets can easily get into the right positions to do this. Mercury, being very quick, does this twice. Uh, once is m end of May, June, I'm sorry, May 27th to the 28th, and it comes up again in July, the 13th to the 14th. So those are pretty close to two of the times of the exact quincunx. And in June, we have Venus making one finger of God on the 19th to the 20th. And I thought it was interesting that this 27th uh, to the 28th of May was when the big news was hitting about Jared Kushner being under scrutiny from the investigation with the FBI. So Mercury is information, and Mercury is news, and Mercury also has to do with commerce. Uh, so there was perhaps a money side to what was being discussed by Kushner with uh, at least the sanctioned Russian bank. So that's going to be interesting to see what comes up when Mercury comes into position again in mid-July um, from a different point in the zodiac, but it's still creating that finger of God. So the one in June with Venus, Venus is ruler of Taurus, where Venus will be as it makes that finger of God. It also rules Libra, where we know Jupiter is. So two out of the three planets in the finger of God have this Venus connection, and Venus is usually also about fairness, kind of smooth, it's pretty steady when it's in Taurus, and um, I think it may help some with international relations, at least I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. Now a finger of God usually operates in a sort of detour off of our planned trajectory. And there's weird things that come along and make us sort of adjust our course. So we'll be looking for some of these weird things that are coming up in June. Now when we talk about 150 degrees, that's not very much distance from 144. So this quincunx aspect is very close to a different one called a biquintile, two-fifths of the zodiac, 144 degrees. And that one has to do with talents, and luck. So we're going to see that Venus moves quickly from this quincunx to Jupiter in mid-June, right before the solstice, into the biquintile with Jupiter just after the solstice. And Jupiter, meanwhile, is traveling one-fifth of the sky from Saturn. So they're going to make a different kind of triangle called a quintile triangle. I like to call that the QT, cutie. And it's very much about bringing good things forth. And Saturn is in a sign now ruled by Jupiter. So we're going to have a strong Venus influence, a strong Jupiter influence. And those are the two planets called the great benefics by the ancient astrologers, the ones that bring the most good into the world. Fortunately, these are in place at the summer solstice and at the new moon on the 23rd of June, right after the summer solstice. So a new moon will have strong effects for the next four weeks. A season-changing event like a solstice has strong impact for three months of that season. So we do see some very beneficial possibilities coming in, especially from this QT. And I would say you can use this energy, whether it's hitting your chart or not, because it's very good for creative activities, charitable activities, bringing in harmony and cooperation. The Saturn piece of it helps us plan and structure things and bring things into manifestation. So if you have a creative or charitable project that you're working on in a teamwork capacity, expect to make really big strides this summer, and especially in the first month of the summer, from the June 23rd to the next new moon, which will be July 
23rd, okay, a month later. So when I was looking to see what kind of things are happening in June, and oh, let's go back for a minute to why one of the things I call about it being jumping, and jumping. okay. So every two to three days, right before the moon is going to change signs, when it makes its last aspect or connection to a planet from the sign that it's in, it sort of coasts on that energy in a condition we call void of course. And sometimes um, the last connection it makes is a pleasant one, and we don't have a bad void of course. Sometimes it's a harsh one, and it might not be a very good period. Sometimes the void of course lasts for five minutes. Sometimes it's three hours. Sometimes it's longer than a day. It really depends on how far into a sign the planet is that's receiving that last connection from the moon. So we went through a period from, um, let's see, February to April, where the dominant planet receiving these final aspects of the moon was Saturn, Saturn being kind of a stabilizing force or one that puts the brakes on things. We're going into a period from, let's see, May through September, where each time, not each time, but a majority of the times when the moon makes its last connection, it's to Uranus. Uranus is the wild card factor. It's unpredictable, it's crazy. So things go from being a little stabler and more predictable into, oh boy, anything goes. And that's one little piece of it. And that was more of a minor thing that I noticed. A more major thing, something called out of bounds. So how to explain this? And I probably have talked about this before. Think of the planets going around the zodiac like a merry-go-round. So not only are these horses, let's call them, going 360, around the perimeter of this zodiac or around that uh, merry-go-round, but they're also going up and down. Now, not as fast as the horses on the carousel. Maybe it's a gradual sine wave. You know, the sun, we see this doing a regular pattern because it has one extreme at the summer solstice and then it's in the middle at the equinox and it goes to the other extreme at the winter solstice and comes back to the equinox, you know, in that middle range, the celestial equator. Other planets can go off the beaten path. We would say that the sun's path is our beaten path or our measurement stick. When other plans go further up or further down in their up and down, it's called out of bounds. It's like off the regular playing field, not playing by the rules, kicked out of the usual, I don't know, team uh, playground. So Mars the planet of action as well as of anger went out of bounds on the 16th of May and it stays there till the 26th of June. So that's 40 days, that's a pretty long period and might be a time when we're finding we're more energetic than usual. That part is good. Uh, but it might find a time when we're being more aggressive and assertive and angry and confrontational than usual and that's not so good. Meanwhile, Mercury goes into this out-of-bounds condition on the 17th of June to the 1st of July. So there's even a little about nine-day period from the 17th to the 26th when we have both Mercury and Mars out of bounds. And Mercury's the mouth and Mercury's the mind. So minds are moving faster than usual or we may have slip of the tongue or blurt or say things we well, maybe they're true, but maybe we didn't intend to say them. You know, we go off script. So if you think about somebody that we know very well who goes off script a lot, this is disconcerting to me because there's probably going to be more of that. So one of the things that we find at least helpful during this period from June 6th to July 4th is Venus going through Taurus. And Taurus, as I mentioned before, is the sign Venus rules. And it really is grounded and stable and practical and looks at values. So hopefully that's going to help us a lot. You know, Mercury 
was uh, going to be in Taurus from the 16th of May to the 5th of June. So it's kind of like a day after Mercury leaves, Venus comes in. So at least there's some stability there and helps the jumpy factor calm down just a little bit. But I was looking at, and I promised to talk to you about um, our president's birthday chart. But first, I will mention this when I'm talking about Venus and Taurus. At the summer solstice, the moon will also be in Taurus together with Venus. And the moon, it's sort of the ruling planet of the United States because we are a Cancer sun sign with the 4th of July birthday, and moon rules Cancer. Moon is said to be exalted in Taurus. That's one of its best signs to be in because the changeable nature of the moon gets stabilized and grounded in Taurus. So this is going to help us have, I think, probably a fairly stable economy, fairly stable economy through the summer. And on a personal level, it's a very huggy, touchy kind of sign, and it brings our family values out very strong. So I expect to see those very important. Um, now Venus is in that finger god and the moon joins it for the summer solstice. So there's still some, you know, a little bit of weird course corrections going on. And at both the summer solstice and the June new moon and mm, possibly even at Trump's birthday. No, not at his birthday. Okay. We do have something called a T-square. Jupiter is traveling for a long time in a kind of square with Pluto. Planet of magnification, planet of extremes. Things can get kind of crazy. Well, at the solstice and at that new moon right after, Mars is making this into a T-square, and that's very jumpy. That's very volatile. Now, it's good if you have some habits you want to change or you want to really ingrain a new um, exercise program into your routine. So you can work with it, but it does tend to bring some things to extremes, and one of them might be anger. Now, Trump's birthday chart. Hmm. We could do a whole show on that. But this man is lucky. In his natal chart, he has a couple of those QTs. In the birthday chart, he's got three, plus two grand trines, which is a really great pattern. So will it be another great year for the Donald? Me? I don't know. The rising planet is Jupiter. Jupiter wants to have things out in the open. If he's trying to cover things up, that won't be good. When he's born, Jupiter is very close to Chiron. Chiron has to do with wounds, hurts. Will he feel like he's being very hurt and wounded? Probably. Uh, he's born with Mercury square Neptune, and that is also in place at his birthday. That's loose with the truth. That's not necessarily seeing things clearly. So. I expect to just see kind of a lot of more of the same of what's going on with him. And <sighs> let's all pray for our country to have a good outcome with whatever jumpy is going on with June because we need to kind of jump into some good mindsets. We'll try that. Let's all be positive when we're looking up. Thank you.